Welcome back to another episode of Baker Dave Presents. Coming to you once again from the Morgan Hall Kitchens. I have a guest today, Joe Paris. He's the Assistant Dean for the College of Education, and he's bringing his recipe for chicken parmesan coming right up. Welcome to Baker Dave Presents. Today I have a very special guest, Joe Paris. You're the assistant, assistant dean, dean. College of Education. College of Education, very cool. So, what what do you plan on making today? What's your what's your story you got going on? Where are you Ch from? Let's let's get some background. Yeah, chicken parmesan. I'm from northern New Jersey. I've been, very Italian. Uh, right? Are you Italian? very Italian? I'm actually not Italian. <laughs> Excellent. I am not Italian. But uh, from North Jersey, so right. I might as well be Italian. Um, and now here in Philadelphia, I came to the Temple about three years ago, and Philadelphia has got a lot of Italians. It seems. I think, I think Italians are everywhere. You know. I think they're everywhere. <laughs> so I thought we'd make a little bit of a twist on on, uh, on a classic, an Italian classic, chicken parmesan, but put a little Philly spin on it with some sharp provolone. Who doesn't love sharp provolone, right? It's like a Philly thing. I'm, I think I'm it's in everything. Realize. I, um, ate it, I ate it at Dinnick's. Have you been? Have oh, you been no, no, no. I have not, actually. Dinnick's or Reading Terminal Market has they, what, they do that? what Travel Channel calls, I guess, one of the best sandwiches in America and has short provolone. I ate well, I it when I arrived. That's the key, though. Like, uh, regular provolone doesn't have a lot of flavor. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I, I actually was never a fan of provolone until I had sharp provolone because it's got all the flavor anytime you get a nice sharp cheese. Yeah. So, your wife make this recipe? You make this recipe? Like, what's... This is my this is my first time making You've the recipe. You've never made this recipe. This is a this is a one off. We're gonna go with it and see okay. what happens. Okay. Um, but my wife, this is her recipe, so I have to at least uh, you gotta give some gotta give some props. Gotta right? give props right? to the wife. Uh, but she's made it for you before. Sometimes obviously. before she's a nutritionist, so this is not what this we're eating. This is the healthy version. This is not a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday kind of thing. This is a cheat. And, and cheat day. And we're not cutting any corners. We're not. Oh, we're, not we're not making it more Excellent. healthy than it already I'm, is. I'm so against you know making it healthy. Okay, so one thing I noticed, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm looking at your recipe, right? Mm -hmm. And it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's not overly difficult. It's, you know, you got your chicken, you got your breadcrumbs, you pound out your chicken, you add your seasonings, you know, you fry it up a little bit, you put some sauce on it, and you had tomato sauce yeah. as an ingredient. I yeah, thought, I cut a corner. Why would you do that? <laughs> right? Yeah. Have you ever sure. made tomato sauce? Never made tomato sauce. All right, sauce. well, today I'm going to give you a treat because I'm going to show you the easiest tomato sauce I've ever seen anywhere. Beautiful. Okay, awesome. so... Typically, this is, and I'm just going to start with this, show you this real quick. Uh, typically, when you, when you make a tomato sauce, uh, chefs will tell you to build the flavors, right? So they'll have you with your pan, you put a little oil in it, you're going to saute your uh, onions, your garlic, and, and you're going to build these flavors up, and then you're going to add tomatoes, and you're going to add your other seasonings, and it's, it's very, it's, a, it's an involved process, okay? Sure. I found this recipe that I love that's like four ingredients and you don't have any technique involved in it. So I'm gonna blow all the chef's things out of the water. I, I'd like to call it, because remember, I'm a baker. I like to call this baker proof. Okay, <laughs> so you like, go. you don't even have to be a uh, super genius to do this. So what I did is I started, you'll see here, I started with uh, canned whole tomatoes. Okay, so we're gonna start with two cans of these tomatoes. And you're working with me, roll your sleeves up. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna not, get ready to work. You're, yeah, you're getting in on this. Yeah, yeah. So what you're gonna do is, you're just gonna crush them up with your hands. You could buy Beautiful. crushed tomatoes, I just didn't happen to have those. Uh, so just take your hands and crush them up a little this bit. This is where you get sort of in tune with your, your You gotta food. become part yeah. of the food, right? We're gonna crush, yeah, yeah. It feels good, and, right? And are these cherry tomatoes? No, 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 they're Roma tomatoes. <laughs> I just thought, because we're at Temple, they might be, oh, they no, might yeah, be cherry tomatoes. Cherry and white, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. How, you would never how, want to use a Roma, or a, cherry tomato for a for a sauce for a sauce right you generally use a roma tomato they have the right right consistency all right so let's and how crushed do we need just, to get these just, things they don't have to be that crushed just you get in there two seconds crush really yep. quick yep. and out right that's what i'm trying to show you how quick this is yep so once you've done that you literally add about uh, a cup of onions that i've diced up right you're going to add uh two cloves i loosely just chop just a little bit and that's only so I can, the flavors will come out in it, okay? And I've got 10 tablespoons of butter, which I have a block, so it's a little <laughs> bigger. Uh, and that's it. Turn this on, let this cook, simmer down for about a half an hour, okay? 
Uh, that's pretty much it. Once it's done, mm. you can either eat it chunky or you can puree it up at that point. Mm -hmm. So while the sauce is simmering off to the side, we're gonna get started on the, uh, the chicken part portion of this meal. Listen, um, you're originally from Jersey, you said, right? I am from Jersey, did yes. You, did you, were you a student at Temple? I was not a student at Temple. So where, where did you go to school? I went to Fairleigh Dickinson University up in northern New Jersey. I'm going to have to look that up somewhere, right? Yeah, that's, you're going to have to look it small up. Small little town? Ta small town outside of New York City. And what's, yeah. what's your major? Like, what are you I, was a, I was a marketing major, and I, oh, did, okay. I did my master's there as well. And then you and came to Temple? started my career, we and then I came to, to Temple you, years right? later. I'm happy to be here. Lucky that's to awesome. Be here. Yeah, you, for so sure. you, you wear the cherry and white well. I wear the cherry and white uh, quite well. <laughs> yep. And hopefully I won't be wearing any like red spaghetti sauce at the end of this. You at probably the end of this will sauce be. Making. You probably, probably will be. be. Listen, and if I do, that's, that's all for the better. Right? Uh, so what, what cooking have you done? You said you haven't made this. In... I've done lots of eating. So no cooking. <laughs> like you're not a cooker? Cooking. I don't understand. Uh, like, no, I'm a cooker. I'm a cooker. What I, do you cook? I, grilled I cheese cook, at least or I something. I could do a grilled Come on. cheese, sure. Um, Boil I actually some water. Just, ju just recently made uh, for my wife's birthday a mac and cheese with crab. She's from Maryland. So oh, nice, nice. So a little homage to her, to her home state. Okay. Uh, some blue crab mac and cheese and uh, some nice garlic bread, nice salad. And that worked out well and, for you? And it worked out very well, thankfully, yes. <laughs> I'm still married, That's if that's, well, if that's, that's what that's matters. Well, that's the key. She either loves you or it was good food, one exactly. or the other. Exactly, yep. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's get started on this. Where, do, you, do you remember the whole recipe, like where you're going with this? Yeah, yeah, so there's an assembly line. Right, let's, let's, make, this, let's make this flour, assembly line. Egg, a bread right? crumb so you got, you got your line. chicken. Yep, We're gonna there's the flour. Slice a little bit. I, I, I did go ahead here's, and put the flour down. The eggs should be somewhere in between. The eggs are after the flour, right? Yep. And then And then we're going to add, well, the egg, we, obviously we're not dipping the eggs in this little container, right? No, we have right? to pour Yeah. Out. Yeah, we got to. There we go. Obviously, you don't cook that off. Anyway. You're supposed to be showing <laughs> me how to cook. Uh, okay, so what's in the breadcrumbs? Because it makes them special. Typically, what I do is here's so our your, my panko breadcrumb base. Panko breadcrumbs, right? Yep. They're a little more coarse then, than you would normally find of a bread a bread crumb. And it, and it creates a really good texture. It's a nice I crunch. I yeah, agree. nice nice crunch. And then we need to season it. So this here is cheese, Parmesan cheese. Parmesan, right? Yep. Now one of the things you're gonna notice. Oregano. Oregano. All of these herbs that we're doing here are dried. We're using basil. Basil, right? We're using dried herbs. We're using dried uh, garlic powder. This is garlic powder. Okay. And then we have some salt and pepper. Um, and salt and pepper, yep. When you're coating something like this and you're gonna have to fry it, I if you use fresh it. garlic and used all these fresh herbs and stuff, you would be way more likely to burn it with the temperatures. But being that there's no moisture in this because it's dried, uh, it's not gonna burn as quickly. So that's a good thing. That's your stirring. Okay, so we got this, we got it stirred up. So we need it, we need a hot pan, right? Yes. So let's get the pan. Let's get the pan going. It's Dave's famous induction burner. Right. Um, you're gonna want a little oil in it. That should be good. Yep. And I typically just make sure it gets around the sides it's, it's of the gonna, pan. It's gonna yep. get around. Like we can, we can put a little more, a couple tablespoons. Yep. Okay. So what we're gonna do is because we want this to be nice and hot, right? We don't want to play around here. Why don't you start your assembly line and then lay your chicken up here Perfect. and then we'll cook it because we only fit so much in the pan anyways right Right. got to do it in in batches i imagine right right yep so, so here's how, the first how you doing one this? we're going to take a uh, piece of chicken it's been pounded out right so goes typically what one of the things you'll do is you'll you'll take a, a mallet if you have it a meat tenderizer works good and you pound it out to a thinner layer so it cooks more quickly in this pan and you get more of the outside crunch with it that's that's a chicken parm yep i typically will Sort of shake off any excess flour there, just to make sure it's not. Okay. And then egg. And then egg. That's beautiful, because the egg needs to make the panko yeah. stick. And then the breadcrumbs. Wow. <laughs> You're really cruising there. I don't mean to make fun of you, man. <laughs> we are cruising. And then we're going to go right here. I'm going to jump in here and help yeah. you out a little bit. Could you double time this? So. Uh, like I said, you'll, you'll pound it out. I, I don't usually have a meat tenderizer because it's 2014, and for some reason we don't seem to use it as much nowadays. Um, you can use a rolling pin. You can use a... Uh, baseball bat. Baseball bat. Yeah, if you've got a baseball bat lying around. Anything heavy, obviously. 
you, the idea is just to make it a little thinner. So I use a can usually, like a, a, a like can. A can. Will work. Uh, and and one of the things I would tell you, go, you can finish that. I'm we're yep. working together here, buddy. Got it. We're on, we're on a team. Team Parmesan chicken, right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, when you're using a can and stuff, because the cans obviously are not super clean and stuff, I would suggest uh, putting. I put it paper in a bag or in or a bag. A, a bag, bag is good, like, like a, a ziploc bag. A ziploc bag or or parchment paper or something that's between the layers, so that that you're not putting a dirty can in a like on your chicken. Right, that's yep. not my thing. I mean, maybe if you like that thing, you know, that's not my thing. Not my thing either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got everything coated here, and it's looking beautiful. All right. Yep. Um. See how the pan is heated up pretty well. The looks pan right. is heated up, so you can throw one in there. Yep. That one you did right there. Throw it in. Seems like it's uh, it's in good good shape. Yeah, it's making a little noise. It's yep. Sizzling, sizzling's good. Throw another one in. You're, you've got the dirtier hands now. Yep. I just I just wiped up real quick because this sticks too. It's like uh, it's like Play-Doh. It's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very definitely sticks to you. So, uh, with the with the chicken parm, what's your what's your noodle of choice? Uh, you know, I'm a penne guy. Are you? I'm a penne I guy. I see that. The, it's like the steak of pastas. Steak of pastas. <laughs> I think it, it all depends on what you're doing with your pasta, right? I guess so. Yeah. That's true. The idea of pasta That's is true. that the sauce sticks to different pastas differently. Right. So, a thinner sauce is going to be with a, a certain Spaghetti type of noodle, or, yeah, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. like uh, angel hair soaks up sauce really easily. Mm -hmm. So like you'll mm -hmm. put you'll put a thin sauce in angel hair and it just looks like you have no sauce on it. It disappears. Mm -hmm. But a nice thick sauce on some of the other stuff. I mean Here it's your go. first time. Let's let's have yeah, you actually do it. You know it. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Get, get in there and And like I said, because it's so thin, it's basically it's cooking almost all the way through even the first time around. Yep. Oh I had another pan. So once Starting you get smell those, pretty good too. Right? Do um, you have any kids? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm not totally sure. You can never be too sure. Uh, any on the way? What's going on? You got any big secrets I we think, can reveal I, here? No, maybe not What's on the on? show, but I think, no. <laughs> I think, I think soon enough. Oh, okay. we're, we're in the planning stages. You sure? But we need to make, we, we need to be able to make some more chicken parmesan. You oh, know, for your and kids? We, and we need some kids for the assembly line. Right, <laughs> for sure. Right? And kids would probably really enjoy pounding out the chicken. I would think that's their favorite part of doing the Who whole. Who wouldn't enjoy pounding the whole, out the chicken? The whole process. We're gonna put the next one on. Okay, I typically, and he did that. I'm gonna show you yeah. why that's wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he took in the middle. The right? raw? No, he took the, oh. the tongs that he's been using to flip the already cooked stuff. These are now not sanitary. Just picked anymore. up the raw chicken with it. So, so these so. need to get. Yeah, these need to go. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We can't to use that for cooking anymore. But we, we've got the main idea of what we're doing, anyways, at this point, because uh, we only need the the four pieces to demonstrate what we're gonna do in here. And that's bad because my wife is a nutritionist. This is what she studies. This is what she does. It's for not food safety though. It's no, about health, she, right? But she had to take food safety in school. Of course she did. Everybody does. <laughs> um, look at this. I have something else I can use. <laughs> this makes sense because you're, you know, you're Baker Dave. That you'd be using a. Uh, spatula. A spatula. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it make sense? Um, all right, so we've got our pieces cooked here. Uh, let me let me check on the sauce. It should be coming up right about now. Go. All right, I've, I've come back with the sauce off the stove that simmered for a little bit. And if if you check this out, right, you see it's it's kind of chunky, but some of the moisture is gone, right? Um, what we're at this point, you, you could actually just stick this on pasta at this point if you want. Now, I didn't chop the garlic up real small, so I wouldn't do it that way uh, for this particular instance. But then what you do is literally I have a, uh, I'm trying to get too much on me. We have a blender here. This is like the greatest device that you have in a kitchen. I'm not a big fan of kitchen devices, I'm gonna be honest with you. I have a lot of things I've bought over the years that I've just thrown out because I don't actually use them. Mm -hmm. They take up space, right? Yep. This yep. does not take up space. This gets used for everything. So once you blend it up, and we're gonna start low. You can see all the chunks of stuff are getting, are getting blended. Yep. Yeah. 
Love the sound of that. It's amazing, right? Look at that thing. That's, that's good things happening in that. Yeah, no, that's, that's good stuff right there. All right, so at that point then, yeah, looks see that? good. Yeah, good consistency now. Yep. See now it's a completely different consistency. It's way more like a sauce. Now yep. here, just so you can see how simple this was, right? Yep. Yep. Try some you of that. See. Cool it off a little bit. Try some of that. I mean, it's just a real fresh Super tomato. Super good. Okay, yep. so what's great about this is it's only got the four ingredients, right? You can take this the next day if you want. Add a little tomato juice to it. You've got tomato soup. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? Add a little bit of cream and some vodka sauce, or some vodka. You have some vodka sauce, a little pancetta. You have vodka sauce, right? Yep. You can add right. cheese to it if you want. And literally, while it's hot like this, throw some shredded cheese in it and burn it up. The uh, cheese is going to get broken up, and it's going mm -hmm. to melt at the same time because it's still hot. Right. And, and turn it into a, a nice Marinara cheese. So, you know what I mean? Cheese, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. cheesier sauce. Yeah. Uh, and there isn't a lot of seasoning in here. Now, I didn't, for this, we have so much seasoning in the breadcrumbs sure. and everything else. Right. I didn't want to add the extra seasoning to the sauce, mm -hmm. right? Right. But uh, you could go back the next day if you're if you're only using it for pasta and you want to add more oregano or you want to add some other season. You can add that whenever. You know what I mean? Right. And cook that right. back in. Um, but this is, in all the years that I've had issues trying to make these complicated sauces, this is ridiculously e easy. Easy. Yeah. And, and delicious. It's really good. Right. Okay. So, well. Look, as far as your food adventures, right? What's the, the weirdest yeah. food adventure? Have you had anything out yeah, of the ordinary? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually a very adventurous eater. I had durian. I don't know if you... Oh, my God. If durian? If you're familiar with durian. It's like that big, Dave. ugly thing. Big, and it's, southeastern it's Asian kind of looks melony but it's, it stinks. It's the worst-smelling food, they say. Delicious. Uh, on Earth, perhaps. I had it as a bubble tea. Oh, okay. You know, with the tapioca pearls. Right, right, right. Unbelievably, so can't get into the bubble tea. I try, but that whole like oh, having to swallow like per like Tapioca I just yeah like pearls. It, that's just me personally. I'm just saying yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't get into it. I'm but really into it. I really enjoy it. That's awesome. It's uh it's an art. So, <laughs> I guess. But durian bubble tea is is uh is something else. Okay, it's a whole so thing. what we're gonna do now, right? Because we want to actually cook this off. Um, in your recipe, you, you put the sauce on the bottom as well, right? Yeah, I typically do a bottom layer, and then I will... So, look, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to set this chicken aside real quick so that we can do that on this tray, right? Yep, sure. And you go ahead and finish that off for sure, me. Sure, will do. So here we go. We have the sauce, What we do right? is we typically will sauce the bottom of the tray here, of the pan. Don't want to use too much of this sauce. And if so you make the, the sauce top. and you find that it's too thick for your needs, like this is going to go in the oven, okay? So some of the moisture is going to come out of it, and you have to keep that in mind. Um, you can add some more water, add is some that, tomato juice, add something to it to thin it down a little bit. We can kind of just do that a little bit. That's good because it's not going to fill yep. the entire thing anyways. And then we can go back on. But uh, that moisture is going to come out when it goes in the oven. Once it cooks and the cheese is melting and everything's bubbling up, some of that moisture is going to come back out. So you got to keep that in mind. If it's the right consistency you want, you probably want to thin it down a little bit before you go and finish what you're doing. Now I'm going to finish it off and then we'll cheese it. It's convenient too. You got a little pour spout, right? Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you do want to spread it around a little bit, if you want to make sure that it's covered. Yep. All right. Good. That's, that's good. It's good in my book, right? Yeah. And then... The sharp provolone. There it is. This is the key to it all. Right? Uh, sharp provolone. Sharp provolone. We're Philadelphia, Philadelphia-fying this chicken parm right here. See, I never really thought of sharp provolone as Philadelphia. Maybe it's only because I'm from. You know that, right? Like, I guess I could, <laughs> sure. I was doing the sprinkling thing, but yeah. might as well just get right in there. Yeah, get in there, let's, man. Let's, let's cheese it up, Dave. Yeah, use all, use all the cheese, dude. The more What's cheese, the more better. Yep, yep. I'm a big fan of cheese. All right, I think that's pretty good. That's good. And we're gonna stick it in the oven. Into the oven, yep. So that'll cook right up. All right, so we got, we got our beautiful chicken parm here with the sharp provolone. And we're gonna need some sort of pasta. I, I'm wondering what kind of wine would go well with this. Do you have any suggestions on that? Wine or beer? I like Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Beer, beer's a good choice, right? Beer is good. Beer is good. Do you know anything about beer? Or are you? I do. I'm actually a home brewer. <laughs> oh yeah. I am. I've made which, my beer. Which would be your beer of choice then for this? I, I, I mean, would do you... a nice pale ale. Probably go well with a sharp pro. An IPA like an Indian pale ale. Uh, or an India pale ale. Something or nice pale and hoppy. Ale. I think yeah, that would be good. Yeah, something hoppy would be good with a sharp pro. 
All right, so we have our, our pasta noodles here, but you, you have to wet them a little bit, right? Sure, so that did. they're not. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we could just pour the sauce over the top on the plate, actually, if you wanted. What, what, whatever. I'm you... a fan of wetting them a little bit. Sure. <laughs> Let's do that. Because I find that it it's, uh, keeps them from sticking. And we're gonna we're gonna plate this up and try it out, right? It's the only way we know we did a good job. Yeah, I gotta see if you if you do know anything about cooking or not, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the big test. Like I said, I know a lot about eating, but not as much about cooking. So that could do that. Wow, that's, I, that's the easy part. I know how to make a mess, don't I? <laughs> I'm not used to working with, see, I'm a baker. Just let's make this clear. I don't usually work with spaghetti. <laughs> Noodles, yeah. I'm trying my best here. Bear with me. This is, wow, this is some nice plate up I got going on, right? <laughs> After I'm making Picture fun of perfect. you. perfect. See, I put you to work, Baker Dave. I, I know. How did that happen? <laughs> this totally did not work out right. Maybe this is like a modern art plating with like oh, the specks of sauce. Yeah, totally. This is, uh, what's that guy? Andy Warhol. No, the other guy. The one that throws <laughs> splatter everywhere. Salvador Dali. No. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right, so we got to get a couple of utensils here. I missed an opportunity to name a, uh, a famous Italian painter. Right. Since we are making chicken parm. All right. Well, let's let's just cut to the let's chase here, right? Let's just chase it. Eat it. <laughs> we got the fancy stuff here. We'll move this out of the way, right? Now that's a serious plating there. You you don't see get that at every fancy five no, star restaurant for sure. No, you don't. Got to get some of that cheese. Some pasta on there. Got to get a little bit of the pasta. Totally not Italian here. Nor am I. Are you getting some or not? Man? I'm Come going on. to. I was waiting for you. No, no, there's no waiting. We gotta, we gotta. Here we go. <laughs> spaghetti list. You have the like. same problem I have, right? Cheers. Cheers. You gotta get some spaghetti. Gotta, I may All have right. to hold it on with my knife here. All right, you ready? Let's go. Cheers, yep. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very good. Just to kind of thing that you want to, I guess, eat in public, on public TV. <laughs> right? And Spaghetti get all, over your, all face. over your face. <laughs> yeah, I totally feel like it slapped me everywhere. Uh, very delicious. I love the sharp provolone because I, always, I do I feel do like mozzarella has always been a little bit bland yes. by comparison. So that sure. makes a huge difference. And hopefully you enjoy the sauce techniques I've shown you. I did. Thank you. Thanks again Truly for an honor. Uh, Thank you. coming by and sharing your recipe Thanks and the for stories with me. us, man. Most appreciated. Thank Thanks <laughs> for having me. We hope you've enjoyed our special guest today, Joe Paris, and his chicken parmesan recipe with the Philly twist. Join us again next time on Baker Dave Presents, and remember, every recipe has a story.